How many how many times would that work, but then you find out that they're married? Never asked that. <laughs> Every comment is about you in well, the comment well, section. Yeah, well, that's fine. <laughs> Norman, that's Norman. Some that's people are just made to give to <laughs> <laughs> When Ken, my brother, married my wife, I said, what in the f*** is wrong with him? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, guys. It is my true honor honestly, to tell you that today's podcast is sponsored by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. And SeatGeek puts all the tickets in, across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. And you know we came through for you guys. Use my code, use our code, wide open for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code wide open. Make sure you click the link in the description and download the app. Thanks, SeatGeek. Hey, you guys know that we love ShipStation. It's been helping us fulfill our orders for like over five years, and we couldn't run our website without it. If you're looking to start or grow your online business, ShipStation is the answer for your fulfillment needs. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation, and 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. So worry less about the bottom line when you save money with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use promo code wide open today to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation. Station.com code wide open. I just talked to my niece in Buffalo. She's 70 years old or whatever. She said that's the best video she's seen. <laughs> but she did say grab us and kick my ass. She didn't say that. But yeah. Like, she should have kicked your ass a long time ago, though. I know. <laughs> what do you got going on today? Would you want to come be on the podcast with us? We'd pick you up. Um. We I could, don't think I have anything going on today. You're hot right now, Grandpa. I mean, everyone, oh, everyone's right. talking about you. Yeah, no, I guess I can do that. No problem. All right. So. If you're if you're down, yeah, we just talk about. I mean, just whatever. You shoot the shit on the podcast. It's easy. You you'll be great. <laughs> All right. Perfect. All right. See you later. Man, we're going to pick up Grandpa Ron. He's going to be on the podcast. A star in the making. He already is. He's a star. star. He's just a hidden star. Throw the headphones on. See if you like them, and if you don't, it just kind of. Uh, Almost locks you in. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you real well. Okay, so basically just, just try and be close to the mic. You, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, about that. Okay. All right. Uh, talk talk to me now. Hey, Grandpa, how's it going? Yeah, can you maybe a little bit, little bit lower in that. Turn him down a little bit. You might have better hearing than me. Try that. I can hear you, I think. Pretty See? good? Yeah, I can hear you. Is it too loud? No. It's okay, perfect. Cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm Okay. Grandpa, do you, do you want a drink or something? I sitting over there. Uh, I thought I better not drink while I'm talking. I might fall off the chair or something. But bring it over. <laughs> there you go. It. I'll have one with you. Oh, good, good. That'd be great. Should I, should I not show this? No, 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 no. no, no you're, good. you're good. I, I don't want people to think I drink. Yeah, that'd be yeah. a shock. Yeah, we gotta hide that. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. All right, this one has uh, this one has been requested by a lot of people. Ever since the very first time that we had you on camera, Grandpa, and uh, it was it was when CJ smashed your TV. Oh yeah, I remember that. But people have been asking to have you on the podcast since that moment, so I'm glad that we could finally make this happen. But uh, that was I, two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah, it's been that long. Okay. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen our last video, um, we we took our Grandpa Ron bowling, and uh, he might have. Had an, uh, a little bit of a slip I'm accident. Not, I'm, I'm not going to make the tour. Let's put it that way. I, no, I <laughs> a bowling tour? Nah, I don't think so. I'm not quite good enough for that yet. I, didn't, I don't know how many injuries there are in bowling. Luckily, you don't seem to be injured. But, I mean, you damn well could have been. You know, when you have a head with nothing in it, <laughs> you really can't get hurt that bad. <laughs> so There was uh, a lot of concerned people, obviously, in the comments. But I got reached out to by... Just a bunch of friends being like, yo, is your grandpa okay? And um, thankfully you are, but a bunch of people have been wondering, so we wanted to have you on the podcast to show that you're still kicking it and still doing all right, and uh, and then also just sh sit down and shoot the shit with you. What's okay? I mean, people never, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. people never thought it was really okay, no matter what I do. So <laughs> it's one of the, but yeah, I'm fine. It took a little bounce there on the, on the uh <laughs> Alley, but uh, I didn't realize it was that slippery, to be honest. <laughs> and I, in fact, somebody asked me if it was planned. Well, I, I kind of planned on hitting that 
uh, alien sliding on my chest forward all the way to the pins. But when I threw the ball, it kind of threw me off balance. I went on my back. So It was amazing how off the cuff you were going, though. I mean, even with, with you know, the back and forth rifts between you and CJ, like, you know, going into it, we were just like, all right, here's kind of what we're going to do. But, you know, just feel it out and, and just, uh, you know, do whatever you think is funny. And then you go and do that shit, which honestly would have been hilarious if you wouldn't have ate shit. But imagine if he would have successfully gone halfway down and Slip. thrown the ball. As soon as you went walking out there, you can see me go, oh, fuck, Grandpa, <laughs> Grandpa. Because I, I legit you. knew what I, I was like, you. does he, what? I, did, I didn't know what you were thinking. I assumed you know it's slippery being that, Not that slippery. you know, you've been through 80 years of life. You think you would know <laughs> a bowling alley is slippery. <laughs> Hey, you want to put this? Yep, put that close. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, but like yeah, that. no, it was it was pretty amazing how good you were uh, at off the cuff just doing that and just going in it. You weren't even scared or anything. Like, I was I was telling Ben, I was like, dude, I mean, we're pretty committed to this lifestyle of like doing stuff like that sometimes, and uh, you were just basically like, yeah, sure, I'll do it, and you just went in guns a blazing and just did perfect. You could be an actor. I've been told that, but not a, not a good one. That's the only problem. <laughs> You're a great actor. Oh, yeah, well. You'd be your own stuntman, too. Well, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I can what kind of stunts I could do. I, I could do that. my own stunts. I uh, do my own stunts, right, and I'll see how long that would last. But, oh, yeah, it was fun with you guys. I, you know, I enjoy it. Hell. You're a hit. You're a well, hit. Well, I don't know about that. You got to see hit. every comment is about you in well, the comment well. section. That's, yeah, well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> normally, he's nor, normally he has to, he bought me in the post office with a, with a, with a picture up. Have you seen this up. man? <laughs> Have you seen looking for Wanted. this guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Used to be husbands were always looking for me sometimes, but that's years and years <laughs> ago. That doesn't happen anymore. So I've been married for, to the same gal for 40 years. So yeah, our grandma. Yeah, the grandma. <laughs> and, you, know, you know, if I could write a book, I could do 40 years of turmoil. And well, and then forty years, maybe a little turmoil, but more fun. But chaos. The first forty years were you'd have been. We could have had a lot of fun, boys. I, we <laughs> fun we do now. have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. So well, what? What do you like? What's the main difference between the first forty to the second forty? Because you're eighty years old. Well, you know, my first forty, you always wonder. You, you, you try and do stuff that that nobody's doing, or you you want to be successful and. In school, my buddy and myself, he was in eighth grade, he got the car. No driver's license, but his mother let him have the car, so <laughs> he'd pick me up. And my parents kind of wondered, God, a kid's kind of young to be having a car. But, you know, <laughs> I did my work at, no, on a farm. I lived on a farm. I got my work, you know, done, and we'd go out. And we didn't get in any trouble. I mean, two things. You never steal, and you don't lie. That was always instilled in so but we'd go out and have some fun i just had <laughs> such a hard time believing you weren't getting in trouble well I we mean, got in trouble but not serious trouble where you know we'd go steal something or we would do something that would damage we may damage a few things we, if you ain't stealing and you ain't lying you ain't getting in trouble <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, uh, what he, that's what he's <laughs> listening i mean we have to do like our, our kind of our goal was to have a, a girlfriend in every town Oh, I got a buddy like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably you. But anyway, because uh, Frank had the car, the car, and we and I was we were always in sports, so you got to know a lot of people, and um, the girls in our own school really didn't like us that much. Why? Well, because we'd always cause everybody going steady, the bullshit, you know, where you, you <laughs> yeah, being your, in a relationship. Well, you hang your they hang you, they want to take your Letterman's jacket and hang it in their locker, that kind of shit, you know. And, but so, it's kind of tough when your Letterman's jacket is with the girl in the in town the over. Town over, yeah. And it wouldn't do that. Wouldn't, no, you wouldn't do that. Never. You were well, only a couple times you date them. Okay. And so, it, like, we'd have a prom, and you'd bring a, a gal from. I remember uh, I was telling Fat Grandma and they were talking about that. And my junior prom, I brought a girl from Litchfield, which was twenty miles. And then homecoming, I brought a gal from Belgrade, which was thirty miles. And then I brought uh, was a senior. I brought a gal from. Buffalo, which is 35 miles. Always had, you know, we never brought the, the dates. And How were you meeting these chicks back in the day? We, we traveled around. And we played sports. So, so, so you, you just drive around in the car? And well, just, not so. Here, here there's one right there. <laughs> there's no, a girl? No, how, that, how that could work, because we like during the winter especially, when you go to a, a game and you'd have the, the B squad, for example, in basketball, they're mm -hmm. playing. So you're kind, of, you're kind of free. So what you do, you look for the cheerleaders on the other team. 
Oh. Oh. And Classic. they kn- yep. yeah, and they know that you're playing on so they talk to you. On the varsity. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You were riding the pine, but yeah. no no, <laughs> we were waiting for the other team to get done. Oh, oh I see. So I until see. Until we had time, and so right. and we get to the older girls because they weren't cheering for the B team, they were for the A team. And that's how you <laughs> meet a lot of them. And it was you know and we say, Well, where you at? Well, we're gonna come to your town and maybe you could have a Coke or something. Coca-Cola, not Coke, but you know, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Or maybe a beer. It depends how old you were. But uh yeah, so that's kinda how you met all these gals. So did you keep in touch with them over the phone? Because like now no, if oh, you meet you a girl, a there's Snapchat, oh, we stuff have. like that. But you you would have had like a landline, you would have had to call the girl. You, you gotta call the dad. Oh, oh no, no, none no, of that. None of that. Because uh we had a phone. We always had a phone, but in our area. I think maybe maybe 20 people on the phone, mm-hmm. and everything outside of that was always long distance. Mm-hmm. And in those days, my mom would never let me call long distance unless it was really important. I mean, just to me, call up for some gal. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, in different oh, area no, codes. Would, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So you'd never get to do that. So you just, we drive, you know, yeah. you know, whatever we had to do, but only once or twice. That yeah. was and you call it. So yeah, you're not enough, enough of that person. So, mm. so your buddy in eighth grade gets the car, <laughs> no license, no but li- you and him just hit the road Kinda. and just start cleaning up on chicks. We had fun. So yeah. you you felt like you had like the upper hand on everyone else. Well, we no and it, it, yeah, and my parents, you know, they didn't say much about it except my buddy, who had who was in eighth grade, and went in the car when he was a sophomore, he he knocks up this chick. Oh, oh no, you're so a wingman. The, yeah. It's like, so, so you had to go solo then. Oh, well, uh, my mom <laughs> says, you know, maybe, you, you, what are Pump you the doing? the brakes. Well, what are you doing? Well, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> of course uh, not. So he yeah, kind of made things, you know. But by then I had my driver's license as well. In the sophomore. Hey, look, man, <laughs> I'm going solo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. So, so anyway, did, you, that, huh? did you start getting, like, quite the rep around, t- around the surrounding areas? Oh, I don't know if I, I did that. I mean, I knew a lot of people. Like, a guy is standing there, and he sees you and your buddy roll up, and it's like, yo, where's my chick? Where's my chick? <laughs> <Or> they, <laughs> they, they, they were no, probably no, looking no. for him. They're going to go well, yeah, try to punch his lights out. No, that, yeah, that was sometimes they tried to do that, too. Get out Did of you town. get in a lot of fights back then? Not really. No? no. Not you know, a fighter. There, there, there's a theory. It's easier to make love than war. So... Did yeah, that absolutely. with all the chicks down. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so there true. You go. Yeah. So Love I, it. You know, I, I, fighting was, my brothers fought, but I, I'm not me. But a lot of times when guys are out fighting, their girlfriend are available. <laughs> <laughs> right? They're over there. You're talking, about, hey, how's it going? Yeah. yeah. So, but that's kind of how those younger years went. And then, you know, I got married pretty young, 20. Mm-hmm. I was 20. And the gal I married was a school teacher, actually. She was older than me. So. Wait, your school teacher? No, Wanda, oh. my, my first wife. You no, guys. she wasn't. She his. was. Okay, okay. She was teaching. Yeah. No, okay, no, okay. But okay. she taught at the school where I graduated where you had from. Been. Okay. Right. So her teacher friends were a lot of those were my teachers. So it was awkward to go to a teacher's party, and here I'm 20 years old, and here's my old teachers and her. Because you were causing chaos, I'm well, sure. Well, well, they were all <laughs> faculty members, and at at the party, and here's this 20 year old punk married to one of us. You know, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> so, so we get, we get, we left town. I mean, we went to a different. Area. You chased him out of town. <laughs> no, went to Wisconsin. She taught in, in Wisconsin, down by La Crosse. You had yeah, to go. Easier. You had to go to a different state where yeah, they didn't we, know you. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, but didn't have it to. Helped. But he did. It helped, <laughs> probably. So you know, you ever heard the saying, "They got the gift of the jab." Gab, gift gab, gab. Sorry, well, gift of the know, gab. I, I, so, gift of the gab. Is oh, it? I, I have no idea. I've never gab. heard that before. Never sure. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it's just like being able to shoot the shit, always having a comeback, always just you know being funny, basically. And you have that Quick. to the like. I'd say you have a ten out of ten. Maybe I'd say actually eleven out of ten score in the gift of the gab. See, I I don't know if I'm a firm believer in that so much. I, I think more is if you if you just have. If you're comfortable in talking to people, well, maybe that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. You know? Have you always been like that, though? Pretty much. Yeah. So but you didn't have to learn it. Get, I would get some vibrations off people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If they were bad, get the hell out of there. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you, uh, you, you mentioned it a little bit before, but when you saw the person being a cigarette salesman, you knew that you wanted to become yeah, a salesman. Yeah, I thought that'd be a good job, yeah. So did you see, like, you know, the, the person out 
selling cigarettes, but they're out bullshitting with people. And you're like, hey, I have that 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 characteristic. I could be a good salesman or, or what, like, clicked. Well, it just looked like a good thing to do. So if, if, Talking to people and, yeah, and just selling yeah, them? Yeah, I, yeah, and I always could pretty much could do that. I mean, but I see, I had, like, five older brothers, and they'd bring their friends home many times, and they'd bullshit with me, and you get to you talk to anybody, you know, whatever it's going to be. What about the humor aspect of it? Like, where where did you get the, the quick wit and the comebacks and the humor side of it? Because yeah. you, can, you can talk to anyone, but how but, do you become a bullshitter? Everybody can do that, I think, yeah, but some of people are afraid to say anything. But basically, I think people, you know, you, you'll know people that will bullshit with you that probably wouldn't bullshit with anybody else, right? Because they're comfortable with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how it gets. I mean, you've, yeah, yeah. after a couple of things, you're comfortable. So you say, you know, you, you're fat, you're ugly or whatever. You can <laughs> get away with in my In my uh, golf group, and we call it name. In fact, our wives say, if we called each other that, we, we'd never talk to each other. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, but, that's how you know you're good friends. Yeah. Because oh, that's yeah. like us, oh, too. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, if you guys weren't. In each other, shit. You wouldn't <laughs> talk to each other, probably. But, but I, I, it's it's, it's kind of like you, you kind of learn that maybe a little bit that you're comfortable with with people, and nobody's any better than anybody else. You know, uh, treat everybody equal, and give everyone the same so, amount of shit, and give every, some more than others. Some some are ju- that. some people are just made to give shit. To. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Dude. I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that certain families just don't act that kind of oh. way. Because I thought it was pretty normal to go to a, a family Christmas and like your your grandpa is telling you how fat you got, but then you're also telling him how old he's looking and shit, and like constantly just like you know make making jokes towards each other. But um, and then Greta started hanging around our family. And uh, after we went to Natalie's graduation last week, we're in the car ride back, and she's like, "I just, um, I just can't believe like some of the things that your like family says to each other, <laughs> <laughs> like some some of the jokes that you guys yeah. make." Yeah, but that really makes for a close knit. Yeah, exactly. and entertaining, and entertaining, yeah. so entertaining. Alrighty, guys, I've been looking for the best deal on some Morgan Wallen tickets, and apparently, so have a lot of other people. Thankfully, SeatGeek makes it easy to find the best ticket at the best prices available. And it's my true honor to tell you that today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. We did it, guys. SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. The NHL playoffs are firing up, and I've been wanting to go to a wild game for a long time. So if they keep on this playoff run, please. I mean, they're a Minnesota sport, so who really knows? But we can hope, right? They keep on the playoff run. I'll be using SeatGeek to track down a ticket for their next game. The best part about SeatGeek is they put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10, so look for green dots. Green means good. Red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you guys know that we came through for you guys. Use our code wide open for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with the promo code wide open open make sure you click the link in the description and download the app so they know that we sent you thanks sea geek so the economy is a little unsteady right now and small business owners like us are looking to the future and trying to make the smartest decisions possible for our business and our brands and that's where ShipStation comes in when you lower your shipping costs and make returns easy using ShipStation, your customers stay happy while you save money we love that ShipStation puts all of our orders in one dashboard. It makes it super easy to compare the rates between UPS and USPS. We get all of our orders from Shopify, but if we did have other stores, it would all integrate into the same dashboard so you wouldn't have to be clicking around, logging in and out of different accounts. It's super easy. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation, and 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. We've already been doing it for like five years, and I see no reason to switch. Automate routine shipping tasks, print shipping labels, easily compare rates, and delivery times to optimize every shipment and automate delivery notifications. So guys, worry less about the bottom line when you save money with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code WIDEOPEN today to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com. Code wide open. 
And I remember being around your guys' family and going like, whoa, this is so fun. It feels like you get all your cousins together and it's really cool because I wasn't blessed with many cousins my yeah. age. They were all younger, way older. Yeah. And once I saw your guys' family dynamic, I was like, man, that's something That's something special. And as I've gotten older, now I can BS with my aunt and uncles a little better because we're I'm older in age. But it is unique what you guys have. Like, there's not many families like that for sure. Do, do you think we can bring Ryan to our Christmas Eve to my house? I don't know if he'd be able to handle it. <laughs> at, at my house, Christmas Eve, it's, um, of course, my, my wife. And, working with everybody, all the, everybody, and then their grandpa Dave is there with his girlfriend. Who's, so, who's my grandma's ex-husband. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, so technically he's like, I don't know what you would call it because you've been married to our grandma since before we were born. But, like, in theory, we're not blood. Which is so funny because, God, you guys, I feel like you guys are two apples right off the tree. Like, you know, you well, have so many similar characteristics. I mean, if you think about it, though, he's always been our grandpa, so like, he did raise us. <laughs> he kind of, I can know. see you guys picked but, up mannerisms. So, so that, and then my brother is there who married my ex-wife at yeah. Christmas time. Yeah, it's like. What? Yeah. yeah. You got my grandma's ex-husband with uh, his girlfriend and then his ex-wife married to his brother. Wow. Christmas Eve, yeah. Yeah, and everyone plays cards and oh, talks yeah. shit, and it's fun. Yeah. We drink wine and beer and Once in a while, else. we have a surprise. I don't know what it would be, but we'd maybe have one on Christmas Eve. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of that. <laughs> what is that? Uh, I don't know what that <laughs> means. Well, yeah. Well. I, uh, I, I, I didn't realize how weird that family dynamic is <laughs> until a couple of years ago. I got ago, older, yeah. I was explaining it to... Uh, a friend or or someone and and I was like yeah it's it's actually pretty funny though because like my grandpa's ex wife is there and then my grandma's ex husband is there and then and then actually my 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 grandpa's uh, ex wife is married to his brother <laughs> and yeah but it all works like it all works and they're just like what hold on no your your grandpa's it's brother's a strange situation married to the ex wife which I still think is really funny because I I just like. I'm trying to picture what that would be like of you and her like getting divorced and then you find out that your brother is married to like getting yeah were you mad hitching up no with her? Or but, like but I've I, already asked you this before I, but no but I did mad? hear something this morning or yeah or last, this morning I think when I talked to my niece she you should visit with her sometimes she'd clue you in a lot of stuff she said her mom just died here a couple months ago and she said one of the things my mom always told me is she remembers you talking me is when ken my brother married my wife i said what in the fuck is wrong with him <laughs> and she, she her mother is 92 and she could still remember the day i said that which was a good point at the time and then after he married her i would say well, i'm glad he's married to her instead of me so that was that was yeah hey, that's what he always would say <laughs> i was just happy that he always, was married to her instead of me they'd always ask me how you know what's that like i mean seeing your brother with you know you're fine with me i mean at least it's not me <laughs> so but uh, yeah but you know getting back to to relationships like that i found out that like my mom's uh mother died when my mom was three so her dad um, ended up marrying my dad's sister, whose husband died in the war. So that we kind of started a long time ago <laughs> doing, doing that. Wow. So, yeah. So actually, my dad's sister was my grandma. Oh my God. Kind of, you know. Wow. And, yeah. And I didn't really realize that growing up when I was younger, but now, you know, later years, I you know, okay. all together. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, in, in those days, I mean, but they were looking. They, everybody knew everybody, and they weren't blood related. But one person's spouse passed away, and the other one's dead, so they got together. That's uh, where, that's how it goes. That's Easy. how it goes. <laughs> so, Easier to yeah. make love than war, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, talking about uh, uh, these guys when growing up, uh, Ben. I lived on a golf course, and Ben, and Sam, and Natalie. Would always we'd come up there and we'd go out in the golf course and they all wanted to drive the golf cart, of course. Uh-huh. Well, Ben was the youngest, so they always beat the shit out of him. He would, they wouldn't let him drive. And now I think about that, you know, it's probably a good thing because I see how he drives today. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have had a golf cart been left toasted. probably. Yeah, they've been toasted. I was you, thinking about that. You yeah. look you look out the window and I'm jumping it off the tee box. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, yeah. Have you watched our reckless golfing videos? 
Yeah, yes, you I gotta have. do that. Do you yeah. want to come with on next one? Maybe. Oh, actually, hold You'll on. You'll get your own cart. You just stay off the side. You gotta stay out of the. I don't danger. know if we can trust him with that. I well, I know we gave I him know. strict instructions I, not to hurt anyone. I we know. didn't tell him not to hurt himself though in bowling. That is where we messed up. Yeah, I'm that getting, one kind of slipped I cut, between I, the lines. I got a cut in my finger. Christ. <laughs> I, I mean, that's. I was telling these guys, uh, Rand. I, you know, I got five older brothers that grew up on the farm. They used to throw me under a bull and, and a kick. What? And, oh. and, and, um, and we'd have, we had boxing gloves, you know, and I'm five older, so I could get the shit kicked out of me all the time. So that was no big deal. I mean, that. Uh, Wow, Grandpa, you tough. are a tough bastard. You know that. Yeah, I'm, well, <laughs> you know how I, fucked up anyone else, even everyone sitting at this table, would be taking a fall like that. I'd be complaining about it for a week. CJ, yeah. CJ, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he would have been yeah, bad yeah, deal. Yeah, you have to know how to land. <laughs> you, you <laughs> just, what are you talking about? You had no time to brace. You. I know. I, I remember going down. God, I felt like I was flying for a minute. You were. I, okay. I remember. <laughs> Going back to the golf cart stuff as kids, I remember one time we had, you were driving the golf cart and we had like, I don't know, four or five of us crammed in that thing. And I was on the end and there was like nothing to really hold on to. And you were ripping it around and we were on the cart path and you took like a hard turn and basically everyone just kind of slid and I just got booted off the side <laughs> oh, yeah. and I just like tumbled and got all skinned up and I was like. Like, I think I might have been crying. And then all of you guys pulled up on the golf cart laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was worried about that. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I hopped on, I think. You guys didn't really care until we got home. Then Grandma was like, oh, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, my, my niece was telling me another story because, you know, she sees some of the shit that happens. But she said when her and her sister were like maybe eight or nine, and I had a 60 Chevy convertible. And so I decided I'll take them. They were at our house. And I said, I'll take you to town to buy a cone of ice cream or something. So I do. And I put them in the back seat. And then I'm driving. So I'm going 90 miles. And their ice cream flies off of their cone. And in, in the, one was in the front one was in the back. Ice cream all over hell. And they told their mother about that. God, I thought her mother, mother, she, you'll never ride with your Uncle Ron again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they never have. I mean, that was still. <laughs> yeah, still. Well, I, they don't have to, but I mean, oh gosh. You know what we used to do? Do you remember when you'd be driving us somewhere and you'd go, hey, I bet you I can make it the entire way home without <laughs> stopping? <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. so and that's, uh, that's across town. And that's, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'd be driving, you know, 20 minutes across town, busy, stop busy intersection, yeah, stoplights, everything like that. So we'd see like a red light, uh, you know, quarter mile up. And he would he would start slowing down in traffic. He'd be holding up traffic just so you can go until it turns green, and then you can go, go again. Same with like stop signs and all that, or if, or if you're like actually getting in traffic. But yeah, we did I it. I think we did. Oh, we would do it, and then okay. we would, and then if you would fail, we'd be like, oh, I told you you couldn't do yeah. it. Or if you'd make it, you'd be like, Gotcha, fucker. He'd be, he'd be like, oh, going like, said that. like <laughs> one mile per hour, just creeping. Until the light would change. It'd be cars uh, behind I remember you. one time when I was riding with you, Grandpa, it was me, you, and Grandma. And there was a guy at the grocery. We were driving past the grocery store, and this guy was getting arrested. And you <laughs> and you pulled over, and, and we watched. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we pulled over, parked, and watched. And like, <laughs> like, oh, you want to watch? And we pulled over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Most people take most grandparents take them to like the zoo. They're like, oh, like, don't that. turn yeah. the other way. Oh yeah, it's cool. Watch, we yeah. pulled well, in. Well, yeah, learn not to get arrested. That's yeah, a, that's, yeah that's, a, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, that's the underlying yeah. message, yeah. <laughs> not the entertainment factor. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think I, you were I, laughing during <laughs> it. You're uh, like, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I've had some great experience with all these guys, all my grandkids. So yeah. a lot of people. So, Man. but you got to, you know, you live wide open is a perfect. You know, that's what you got to do. No, Absolutely, you know, and uh, help people do things and yeah. hey, whatever. Man, I always say it, but like I really hope that by the time I'm your age, I've lived a life like you, and I'm still uh, like have energy like you. Maybe I shouldn't exactly. say lived a life with, like you, but just had a very fun life like you. Like that's what you've had. So you can tell he hit his head in hockey, can't you? By the way, you're <laughs> but like you're, you're in such good, you're in good condition, and like you just. That you can do a lot of stuff that most people ten years younger than you can't even do. Well, that's your fault. <laughs> I mean, well, seriously, like 
uh, your parents, both are chiropractors, have taken great care of me, obviously. Uh, next morning after I hit my head, I get phone calls, get your ass over to the clinic and do this and do that. So they take good care of me. Did they say you were out of shape when they fixed no, you up? No, they said my neck was, neck was a little bit screwed up. He and just I'm, kept I'm, complaining I'm, about I'm, his finger. And my finger. Is Which I'm, on, I'm just like, I'm happy that that's it's the It's not only even thing. broken. Yeah. Yeah, well, just a little yeah. jammed up. Yeah, well, Jason put a, a laser on it, and he said if it hurts, that laser is broken. I said, just cut, for Christ's sakes. I mean, everybody gets that. But anyway, yeah. so that, that helps, keep, obviously, keeps you you're healthy. And, you know, you kind of watch what you eat. You know, I don't... Really, eat, you do? I don't eat a lot of greasy foods. That's good. And I've never smoked, ever. Cigarettes. And what about vape? No, I'd never do that. They didn't have vapes back then? No. no. Well. And they had dope, or marijuana... But I'm afraid if I would have tried it, I would have liked it. So I stayed away from it. So right. <laughs> you know, I can't believe you never smoked cigarettes either. Yeah, never what, what was the reasoning behind that? Because growing up, I'd imagine it was extremely Every, common. Yeah, it's like how vapes are now. My, well, my mom never smoked. And my, my older brothers, three or four of them did, I guess. And my dad did. My early years, I don't remember him smoking. And whenever my, my uh, brother would would. Bring older brother bring a girlfriend home or something, and my mom said she smokes. It was like she put something in my mind that it's really bad, you know. So she never did. And I was in sports, so we had training, drank beer, but you know, worked that off. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> You've been drinking beer your whole life, pretty much. When did you start drinking beer? Oh, I don't know. Cause you know we used to uh, have on a farm. We had thrashing days, you know, where you'd harvest and thrash. I mean, crews would come in, and, and when we do that. We had a milk cooler. That you guys went in that milk house, and my dad would buy two or three cases of beer and throw it in there so it'd stay cold. And people would come in and have a beer before they go back out. So I maybe I don't know, thirteen, fourteen. You guys sneak it and grab a beer. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have too many, you know. But I would have, right. you know, it's good for you. It's better than Coca Cola. That, that's another thing you've or, always or, told me. Is <laughs> drinking a beer is better for you than a pop. Well, yeah, if you're old enough. Well, not old enough. Enough, Dan. Don't uh -huh. take any of this as advice. Just, just, <laughs> this is just what the way I was told. <laughs> well, yeah. So, where, where do you get this energy from, though, Grandpa? Uh, I mean, I don't take drugs. I, I, I don't even have a doctor. So, I, yeah, but I try and eat right, pretty much, if I can. And I don't, you know, I eat eggs every day, and I don't eat a lot of fatty foods. And I don't drink. I don't drink a lot. I don't drink, don't drink pop with the sugar and you know, stuff like that. So. How, how much of a difference do you think just being social makes and, oh, and like getting uh, out and, and talking to people, but more along the lines of just doing something? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, if you can have social, you can bullshit with somebody and go out. Well, look at people, you know, that don't do that. Uh, they get up and they can barely walk mm -hmm. and they limp or whatever, back bent over and their nose is touching their toes, basically. Uh, they don't socialize, you know. In fact, I was telling your grandma, yes, we should go out dancing some night, you know? And I could still do that. She's a little lax in that maybe, but I could do that. And I yeah, think you could do a lot of things, well, no, grandma, But, I, but just... I have the energy to do that, and it's because, but you, you got to socialize with people. you got to talk to people. You guys do that all the time. That's what you know. You know. Mm -hmm. But you have friends probably your age that are not social. Or mm -hmm. not friends. People you definitely know. do. And you know, what, they're, what are they like? I mean, they're duds probably mm -hmm. not to knock that but i don't know some people are just have it or they don't though you know well like you have a knack for just like when you walk into a room you just like being funny you're talking loud people just like immediately kind of like you and then like just you the whole vibe of the room energy. and the positivity of it you know just everything gets elevated and uh yeah everyone else has more fun whether they're even not talking around you i, I mean you have to have good feelings towards everyone Basically, you should have, you know. Like, you know, the other night we did at the uh, pool. There were three gals sitting on the table yeah. there. You know. I didn't know that happened. I was laughing. They were pretty good looking chicks, yeah. Well, I was talking to them. Okay? You know, they were, I said, we're having some fun here. And, and so it's pretty soon they're asking questions and they're talking to all of us because we're nice to them. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's yeah. a good point. You well, walk in the there energy, the way thing, you talk yeah. to people. Yeah. yeah. If you're smiling when you're talking oh, to, yeah, you yeah, know, you and you're just. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can just tell. I feel like almost everyone has that innate. You can tell if someone means well. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you gotta be careful because there's plenty of people who are snakes. But oh yeah, yeah. But uh, ultimately, in like most 
cases. You yeah. can kind of tell. Yeah, I kind of ended up, you know, when I was traveling in the clothing business, that all, most of my, all my clients or customers, basic clients, I guess, were friends of mine. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, I, I would stay at their house, you know, at night. Mm-hmm. And sometimes come over and wake dinner and you stay here. Because uh, I get along with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, treat them fair, you know, don't cheat anybody. So, but, but, but yeah, that, you are correct on that. Social is so important. And that's why I worry about nowadays the kids working on computers. Oh, yeah. Like for, for, for work and then school. Oh, yeah, and yeah. school. I mean, you got to have part of that social life. You're, oh, you're going to turn out to be a machine, basically, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so, yeah, 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 that's scary. Would you go door to door doing sales? I did that. I did that when I went to, I, I sold Fuller Brush at one time. I feel like that's where you've got to like really refine your social mm-hmm. skills because well, every every door to door salesman or person who did door to door sales actually kind of has very similar. I I did Fuller Brush and you got are you familiar with Fuller Brush at all? No. Uh-huh. Well, Fuller Brush, you'd sell uh, spray cleaners or uh, room deodorants, and they'd sell brushes, you know, fingernail brushes, scrub brushes, toilet brushes, uh, cleaners, and you'd have your case. You'd always have these little leaders. You'd knock on the door. You'd give them a, what I mean by a leader, a sample or something. But when I went to work, these guys, I was in St. Paul. They put me in the frickin' slums or the low-income areas. Really? Oh, yeah. Were you, getting, were you worried walking no, around? No, I wasn't like, worried. It wasn't like the hood or nothing? No, I wasn't worried at all. Oh. But, uh, but they didn't have the money to spend no, as thought, compared to the... They thought they did. So I, they give me these orders. Shit, I'm writing these orders, you know. Well, then I have to deliver them a week later. I go back... None of them have any money. So oh, no. Stuck. Yeah. But some of the places I came, you go in, they stunk so bad. So I'd open my case up, and I'd always have these room deodorants, and I'd spray them above my head. So I'm talking <laughs> while this is settling down, and as soon as I would go away, I'd grab another one. <laughs> spray it above my head and so I can talk to them without choking. <laughs> but some of these places, I remember this one place I'd walk into, I'll never forget it. Was, I walk in. Lady lets me in. She must have weighed 300 pounds. Ugly, no tea. You know, whatever. <laughs> I walk in, and, and at the refrigerator, she's got a, a broom handle holding the refrigerator door shut. And, and in, in those days, they had milk bottles, you know, and there were empty milk bottles sitting on, that weren't washed out. Oh, and, yes. and, and And the side of, of the refrigerator was just dirt. Ooh. The house was dirt. It stunk so bad, I can stand it. And then you want to get out, and well, well those people, no, no, stick around. Let's, let's see what, what you got, what you have. Uh, I got an appointment. I got to go. But, <laughs> I mean, some of those places, what a lesson to be learned. But if you, go, but if you can go door to door, a, a lot of people that sold Fuller Brush have been done okay afterwards because if you can go door to door and talk to those people and stand that, you can almost do anything. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. no, takes courage. Mm-hmm. No, or you don't, or I don't know any better. I mean, no. the two. I'd say the courage Third. came in handy <laughs> yeah, yeah, when, uh, yeah. with the blind bowling. Well, yeah, but that's that's some of the sales stuff, yeah. And then you get to some places in corporate where everybody thinks they're on on a pedestal. And you, you know, I, you know, it's a privilege for me to get let to you talk. try and try and sell me something. Well, screw you. But but once you got past some of those buyers, they were great. Yeah, if you had a good product, but. Uh, that's kind of how uh, sales work, you know. Mm-hmm. But, I, oh, I just, this is a good one. I forgot to tell you guys about this. It's Easter time, and I'm going to like, Watertown, South Dakota, that way. I'm, go- I'm going to Watertown to call on a customer there. And I used to have a deal underneath my seat. You never heard of this one. And it was like a little flapper, and it would say, uh, how about a drink? Would you like a cup of coffee or uh, whatever it may be? So, so I, I see this gal driving this maybe a 65 Mustang, whatever it was, and I wheel up and I go, good looking gal. So I walk up, I pull my sign out, and I hold it like no this. No fucking way. You had a sign to yeah. hold out the window? Yeah, I kept it underneath the seat. And I, <laughs> and I, and I, and I could Wait, read. was this just you or, or this was like a thing? This was me. Okay. <laughs> that was my That's deal. how you'd pick them up. Well, you'd be how you'd meet them. Okay, yeah. So anyway, I have the sign, and I bring it up, and I put it next to the window, and she looks at me like. Which sign was it? It just said, how about a drink? It's like 2 in the afternoon. Oh <laughs> and so we get to the stop sign, and she's right behind me. So I get out of my car, and I walk over. And I say, you see my sign? Would you like to stop for a drink? And she says, sure. So we go to a place called the Pheasant Inn, which is a 
restaurant bar in Watertown. This is like 2, 2.30. And we drink gimlets. What Not are those? Gimlet. Gimlets. Well, they're vodka with a little rose of lime juice in them. You drink too many, you'll know it. Okay. okay. So anyways, and we go in this bar, and she's drinking gimlets with me. Well, she's on her way to Belfouche. You know where that's at? That's borders the Wyoming border. Okay. Right? It's across the state. Yep. So we're drinking about 5.30 maybe. And so she's heading out there because she's on Easter. She was a teacher at Sherburn, Minnesota. Mm. And she was out, her parents were out in uh, Belfouche okay. and her brother, and she was going to go visit them for Easter. So, okay. She said, why don't you come with me? I said, I can't. I'm working. She says, oh, I'll bring you back. I can't. I'm working. She's like, no, you're not. We're sitting in a bar. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so anyways, we get in her car, and, and we have to drive across. So I'm, okay, I ride along. So we get in her wow. car. And it's a five-hour drive. Find her brother. It's like one in the morning, whatever. I'm tired. And uh, so piss around at night with whatever. Next morning, I got to go back to Watertown. Now yeah. I'm five hours away. <laughs> so I said, you don't have to give me a ride back. I'll, I'll try and catch a bus. No buses. And fly back. And no planes. I said, well, I guess you do. So she had to give me a ride all the way back to Watertown. So I screwed up two days every vacation. <laughs> Just because of because of your sign. My sign worked pretty good, too. In the, in the morning, you could go, how about coffee? You know, and then you'd go in the restaurant and have coffee. How many, how many times would that... Uh, work but then you find out that they're married never asked that because right? <laughs> <laughs> i'd imagine you yeah. know if you're having a conversation with someone but that one's just like you see someone you're like well want to go on a well, date if we're driving down the road i mean in and and like south dakota especially out in the middle of nowhere by themselves they're probably yeah true yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense yeah I mean, you said you. Had I mean, I mean, you wouldn't do that. You saw some lady with two kids in the back seat. You didn't. Well, you don't yeah. want to deal with them. No. You said you had the some, kids going to do. You, ha- you pissed off some husbands though. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I lived in Kenyon I, with my buddy, we were single, both of us, and I get a letter in the mail from this guy, and I was, and they were not getting along anyway. But I was mm-hmm. maybe. Going out with his wife, let's put it that way. <laughs> and anyway, I get a letter in the mail. It's from her husband. And he, a letter? Yeah. How in the hell do you get my address? How in the hell does he know who I am? And in there, he's starting to kill me. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to come to your house and kill you. Oh, Shit. Just concerning because he wrote a letter to your house. Yeah, so he yeah, definitely get, knows where you live. He knows live. where I live. Yeah. And it's only about 80 miles from where he lives. So my buddies, I, I live with, I mean, they had fun with that. Schmitty, strange car just pulled in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do I do? Go out my upstairs window because there's only one door out of the house. And come, and, well, then it wouldn't be. But they did that a number of times on me. But finally, that settled down. He never did come? Not when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. But he got over it. They were getting divorced anyway, so it wasn't. A, yeah. That was the only run-in? No, no. I didn't know what <laughs> that. I had, I had one in Fargo, actually. Yeah? Okay. Well, that was long. I mean, years, that was, and that was probably 50 years ago. And... And this guy, I go to her place. I'm taking a shower in the morning. Door knocks. Somebody knocks on the door and opens it up. It's a guy. Joy. Uh-oh. Yeah. And I'm, I'm naked. <laughs> taking a shower. I'm going to take Talk about being vulnerable. Well, I'm going to take a bar of soap first of all. I'm going to rub on his eyes and <laughs> whatever I have to do. I don't you had know. a plan. I did have a little a bit of a plan. <laughs> rub it and, in his eyes and then just punch him? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a fighter, but I'll, I'll rub, rub soap, soap in, in his eyes. eyes. <laughs> well, he can't. That hurts, you know. Yeah. yeah. Right, you're right. So, but um, I, I don't want So I said, and he said, that's my girl, right? I, I didn't realize you, she was married. He As said, you're well, using his sham- his bar of soap no, to wash no, your nuts. No, no, he didn't live there. And she, he said, well, we're not. That was my girlfriend. Oh, I said, well, that's different. And then, but then they go in the bedroom and argue. All my clothes are in the bedroom, so I got to go in there and get my pants and my shoes. And just said, That was an awkward moment. Talk <laughs> about it. And geez. I got the hell out of there. <laughs> I, I told her I'm not coming back to your house. You're going to see me. You have to come out. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. not well, well, you, well, you, you know, you get some interesting experiences when you're you can free and do whatever whatever you want, kind of. Yeah, like yeah, sounds like it. So that was the well, first 40. When I, I went time, my brother and I and two other guys, we go to Nassau. We're in the Bahamas. Bahamas? Yep. And we went to play. It was my birthday, actually, March 7th. And uh, we go to a Playboy Club at that time. It was fairly new there. 
And we they had those in the Bahamas. The first one they built. Do they still yeah. have those? I don't know if they do or not. There's no way. I feel like yeah. they've kind of gone extinct. Yeah. Meet this uh, gal from her and her friend uh, from uh, Louisville, uh, Kentucky. So we can, well we spent a couple of days. We have all all get together. We have fun. So they want us to come back to uh, Louisville with them. My brother and myself. Okay. What the hell? We're in no hurry. So we do. <laughs> we get back to Louisville and. Lemo picks us up at the airport. It was her butler. Oh, oh my. Mm-hmm. So we go back to their house. Man, it was on the river. A nice home. God damn, this is all right. That was the one my brother was fooling around with. And uh, her husband had passed away, but he owned all those, uh, like, uh, carpet ranches. You know, that kind like of car- a carpet store? Carpet store. Stuff carpet like that. world? Well, stuff like that. With a home decorated. He owned around the whole country. He owned Wow. Huh? So, yeah, and then she also owned a country western bar hmm. in um, Louisville, and she owned a radio station. Jeez. Yeah, so we're there. Yeah, so anyway. Up. But she had never gone in her bedroom and since her husband died. So that bedroom that, that overlooked the river. So I got that bedroom. And in the morning, Matt pushed the <laughs> so button. So he gets it. Yeah. I yeah, took, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, so I pushed the button behind me, and here and maid would come up. Bring me orange juice. Oh, no oh, yeah, shit. yeah. Because the other gal was for stand. But anyway, we're supposed to go back to the Kentucky Derby. And in, in, in the clothing business, you get your lines that would break, like for fall or winter. Well, that was, would have been my fall line, which is a big time of the year for me to be out selling. And when you get your line, you're supposed to get your ass on the road. And go I was going to say that. It seems like in a lot of these stories, it's been that you've taken advantage of an opportunity and you're just like, yeah, no, the other stuff I got to do, that I can do later. I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity now. It's, it's really cool. It's like, like, I admire set, that. Yeah. You set your life up so you can kind of just do whatever you want. Well, it turns out that this gal's booth that she had, her box, was next to the governor. Okay. <laughs> so I'm thinking... Okay, and my, I get my line that particular week to go back to work. And I think, I go to that fucking Kentucky Derby. Or I go down there, and I'm setting up in their box. And my guys, my bosses from Texas, look at the, because there he watches the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> sees me setting up in the box. Why isn't that asshole on the road selling goods like he's supposed to be? So I didn't go. Oh, wow. And I didn't go. And that's one of the reasons I didn't go, because I didn't want to jeopardize my job. And I got thinking about that, you know. I mean, he's, he's in Minnesota, and now he's, he just got his line because they know when they ship all my samples. And now it's Saturday, he's down in Louisville, Kentucky, at the Derby. Ah, uh, he's not working. You were selling so, clothes to the governor. Yeah, you couldn't have said well, like, well, cause it, you, well, well, because I thought they were, when they run the camera, mm-hmm. they always show the governor. Yeah, and, of course, you'd be right in the side. Right on the side, and they <laughs> would talking see. talking shit, drinking Oh, a beer. yeah, yeah. And I, oh, <laughs> shit, it's not worth it. I didn't Is that know. wrong? Yeah, I said I didn't go. Grandpa, you did. Uh, Ryan kind of mentioned it, but everything that you're saying is basically you just saying yes and then just figuring the rest out afterwards. Like, you, you, Have you always kind of just been like, fuck it, let's do it? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get me in any serious trouble or anything and don't hurt anybody. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm game for a lot of stuff. The only like, question, hey, we got a prank. Do I have to get naked? Kid. No. All right, I'm in. <laughs> That's his only stipulation. <laughs> yeah, you were in before you heard the prank. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But no, I do appreciate that. I don't know if it if it's the times that's a little different. I feel like now it's you're so easily connected. Like your boss would be calling you on Friday and go, hey, yeah. how was sales? You don't get that day or two of leeway when you're- They're tracking di- the truck, yeah, everything. Yeah. Exactly. And I feel like life moves maybe a little bit faster. I don't know. But I really can admire that you're just like, yeah, I, I went to the Bahamas. I took the time to do this. I took the time to drive five hours across the state of South Dakota with some chick. Like Stuff like that, I don't think people just do now. Maybe because the world isn't set up. Maybe yeah. girls wouldn't pull over if you pulled, yeah, held up a sign and said, want to get a yeah. drink. Maybe they're smarter nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, it, yeah. it's just so cool. And it shows you can learn by saying yes to experiences and stuff like that. Like You almost never regret saying yes to something. Which is maybe a bit oh, too much of a blanket oh, statement. Oh, that I said yes a couple of times when I got married. I shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that—that's one maybe I should have. 
but we said, no, I'm walking out of here. So. Well, I, it worked out for you and Grandma. Well, yeah, well, yeah, no, I, yeah. Grandma's <laughs> sitting here like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said yes to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No. I, I always give her shit about that. I said, oh, man. But she's a great lady. So, I mean. Well, she's, she's managed be, to put up with you for, she, what, yeah, 40, 40 years? years? Yeah, she's wonderful. So, that's that's perfect. But I do find it so funny because Grandma is, like, one of the nicest people I've yeah, ever met. Yeah, she is. And, um. I just think it's so funny that you two ended up together. Not saying that you're not, but uh, I just picture Grandma Polar opposites. more of like a, just like a, you know, she's a little bit quieter, but just like clean cut, sweet lady. And then you got you coming in. just Kind of like you and well, Greta. But yeah, right? very similar. <laughs> very similar. Yeah, I don't know if I, if I say this, but what it probably happens because of her previous marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, living the way that, did. I mean, like, that was kind of a down the road, middle of the road, probably kind of thing, you know, we know about. Right. And, right. and finally, you know, do I want this anymore? You were, you were in the ditch. You are driving in the ditch. <laughs> 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 they were down yeah. the middle of the road. You were going across the yeah. ditch, and then you were popping hitting back the up. Approaches. Hitting the other <laughs> side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jumping approaches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the other night, uh, it, was, it was probably 11 or so, and... Um, <laughs> We were in, down in Minneapolis. Uh, everyone wanted to go to bed, but me C and CJ and Grandpa Ron wanted to go to the casino. And Ken. Ken was our driver. Oh, yeah. Ken, he, Ken, he, he was, was very eager. Ken, Ken, was Ken was game. Ken was game. Yeah. And, and we were talking about going to the casino, uh, but it, it ended up getting vetoed. But I think we still got to do something like that. You guys will love that casino down there. You well, we just need a little bit of help. On the on the gambling aspect, not so I don't know if you're any help, but I think we need to switch something up. We need some good luck. Well, yeah, I, yeah, but you know what? I was thinking, why? When I have it in my back of my head, um, the part you, that got hit, we got hit, yeah, right here. Uh, you guys should do, do a, a casino night here sometime. Let us you know, the games to go. We do those. Uh huh. And we set up maybe six blackjack tables, a roulette table. Oh, that'd big, be fantastic. A big wheel. Uh, you have to. Holy. You know, look, we can do that. Uh, I, I, the money table. part of it, we, we, we got to play money, $100 bills. I don't think you'd be allowed to. Oh, we can't do real but, money? But, well, but here's how we can do that. Uh, <laughs> You do that, and you we, you would have to uh, you get chips, mm. okay? Uh, yeah, but or and you get money to start with, and everybody have to buy play money, and let's say say everybody spends a hundred bucks, and they get X amount or whatever they get, and then they play with chips, and then at the end of the night, you take your chips in, and it's worth X amount of dollars in chips, and then you have your prizes you can mm. bid on. Mm. Or whatever, however you want to do it. But I don't think... I, I think from what I watched a movie on it, as long as the house doesn't take a cut, it's not a casino. Oh, okay. Yeah. All so right. Okay. We should totally do that. There's tons of people in this area that would totally pull oh, up. If yeah. we had blackjack, and it'd be so got, good for your ATM. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'd keep yep. my ATM plumped full. <laughs> I'd probably swap from a brink twenties to <laughs> 20s. And, and I'd ha I would have the dealers, and I'd have people, because I work with them all the time. You know, I deal blackjack all the time, games to go. So we got tables. We got we got uh, roulette, got two roulette tables. We got a spinning wheel. I can't believe you have a big wheel. Evan loves big wheel. We spin it. And yeah. You, yeah. We got that. And then we'd have uh, one called uh, a horse race thing. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, we'll get some other games too probably. But you put maybe seven or eight or ten games together. You can accommodate quite a few people. I don't know if you got enough room in your parking lot for everybody. But um we could build one here. We, what? Yeah. What's like your go-to gambling game? I'm by myself, uh, probably probably blackjack. Yeah. Do you think you have the best odds? The video poker, I think I mentioned to you before, we play yep. video. That is your best odds, except for the guys who really know how to play craps. I still don't understand that game at if, all. If you're really a good crap player, you can you'll win because you know what you know you can cover your bets. You're smart enough to know how to cover your bets yeah I, i'm not smart no enough idea. to do that yeah, i'm just either. a crap I, player uh, all, i'm just a crap player all around well, you know that's true then i right? can't no i no i just i just can't play i'm, I'm like crappy no, i'm bad he is oh, i am a shitty player, player. Yeah. i'm a shitty gambler oh yeah yeah well, maybe we've seen the game sometime uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, but no, if you learn how to play craps, I mean, really know how to do the odds. I had some friends that were really good at it. They they fly them to Vegas all the time to play. Oh, man, I was telling these guys, uh, you know, they had this one friend that he would run money through the front desk mm-hmm. at the hotel. So they think he's spending all this money there. Could he take it out? And he he just keep have more money. He would he'd gamble, but he wouldn't lose it. But they don't oh. know that. But they 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 think because he's running. Five ten thousand. Genius. 000, five ten thousand through the check through the front desk that he's gambling a lot of money in their casino. Therefore, they'd get they comp his room, fly him in. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if they still do, do that because they've know. got the player cards, no so you can track what you put in. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. still don't know. It might be. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't. Think, yeah. He, let's say he doesn't use his player card all the time. He just plays. You know. I, yeah. Uh, I I don't know. If he still does, I don't think he still does that. But I don't know uh, if I'd have the self control if I've if I've got money coming in. If I would just, walk in, uh, just put it, getting in ready the to shape. walk it out, and he'd end up being yeah. like, "Let's put it on black." Yeah, and then it'd be gone. Yeah. But I, but I, but quick. I had a, a good friend who was a actually he sold his co- a paper company in San Jose, California, and just became had the money just to play sports. He could be bookie, sports but bet. yeah, he didn't. Oh. He wasn't a bookie. He could be. But he wasn't. I mean, he just for himself, and he'd have his budget for baseball, football, and that's. And then he wanted to be. He was a professional gambler, so some of the offshore gambling at that time they wasn't not a professional gambler. So he let he ran it through my computer, <laughs> so I, I would see all the bets, <laughs> all the all the bets he's doing, you know. Yeah. And so some day week, some days he'd bet twelve thousand. And lose nine, and he bet twenty and win forty, and it was really fun to, to watch that. Yeah, I bet. No kidding. Yeah, and when I go to, go to Vegas to to visit him, we'd go to the when he make his bets, we'd bounce all around town at six in the morning to find out where there's a half a point difference in a spread because that's a big deal. Could he bet? And when he played blackjack, he had to bet a hundred dollars at a time to keep his card going, mm-hmm. and they keep at the MGM. And he got all his comps, you know, he'd go there, and Mr. Bennett, how are you tonight? And you'd have dinner and all the wine you wanted and free food. I don't know how much they do that. He passed away, how they're much of doing that anymore. But uh, I think they do. Do they? We have a buddy who gets all of his stuff comped, Yeah, and he yeah. goes down, and he'll either win real big or lose big. Yeah. But, one uh, or the other. But, yeah. I wonder, so, like, Steve will do it is – uh. Always at the casino, Red Rocks Casino, and they're like taking really good care of him and doing all this stuff for him. But I'm, I just wonder if he is positive or negative. Because if he's positive, why would why would they do there's it? There's no way he's. Yeah, well, also, but he is promoting them. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'd imagine that they have similar treatment to other people that are just big gamblers. They must just be taking the risk on like. This person's an addict. They're gonna keep doing it, yeah. and we're yeah, eventually, eventually gonna win. win. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they should count me a room. I'm a consistent <laughs> loser. The ho- yeah. the they ho- don't need to. Yeah, they you know you'll come back either way. <laughs> the, ho- the house is a winner. It's tough. always. Yeah, it's hard yeah, every time. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're like that, you know, I'm telling these guys, you're, you're a gambler. The time I was in, in the Bahamas, I go to the to the casino, and our dealer is stoned. Okay. And yeah, what the hell. Anyway, playing blackjack, and, and nobody would break, and he pays everybody every time almost. Go around, he'd break, he pay you. Well, this is a hell of a deal, you know. <laughs> yeah. and people were lined up, and one guy wanted to buy my seat. He offered me 500 bucks for it. So he wanted got people behind us watching, and you don't, you're not losing. And my buddies keep taking my money, you know, because I'm winning, and, and I'm kind of like, man, if I have it, I'll spend it. Oh, I suppose so, you got to so, shift it off the so, table well, and they, get it away. They, they kept taking it. No, I think because he was so liquored up. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. That was probably what. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, they changed dealers, went out to another story because although the pit boss came over one time and looked at him and he said, sleepy, 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 wakey, wakey, wakey. They're all British, <laughs> all British there. So because they, the, they got their eye on the sky. Yeah, they and know. I, and I, guys, I couldn't believe it. So anyways, this other guy comes back, shit you know, I, I don't have money left. I lost it, what I had. So I go home. Next morning, they come in there. They take it. 
they threw twenty eight hundred dollars on my bed <laughs> that I had won that they took. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah. But, Those are some true friends. Yeah. No well, kidding. With my brother, and you know, I would have tried to double it, and then I would have <laughs> yeah. been like, "My brother won. He won. Yeah. I lost it." Well, was, yeah. well, I'd be like, "What? What are you talking about?" And you'd be like, "Perfect." Exactly. Doesn't remember. When you. I, we went back the next night, and he's still working. He, he wasn't stolen this time, but he was still still had a job and. It was amazing. Is people I, lining up to I, hop on that well, table. Not, yeah, not, not that, not the next night, but uh, amazing how he still had a job. <laughs> no we, kidding. I mean, I never had seen that before. Yeah. But anyway, getting, I, think about a casino night. We'll, we, we'll, we'll, I think we'll, we got to, just yeah. for fun. I don't think we could put it on YouTube, but it'd just be well, fun. Well, just oh, be fun. People so fun. would love no, it around it, here. It, we it have a just, lot of friends that, that like to gamble. And you might have a, 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 a recreationally night, a, a, a side on auction at the end. On, on some, if you want to give away some stuff, you guys give away a lot of shit. So. Maybe like a t shirt or something? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Motorcycle, car, whatever. <laughs> a case of beer. Oh, blown <laughs> up R6. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that you guys, I think you guys like to gamble. That's a, that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, that would be fun. You got any stories about these hooligans when they were kids? Anything they did? Oh, that- well, you know, yeah, I got one, one, one about uh, uh, some CJ over here. When we were building a house, this has been in 2000 building a new house. So we didn't have a, we sold our old one. We didn't have a place to live, Grandma and I. So we'd bounce around. We stayed at Ben's parents' lake home for a while. Going to stay at Kim and Jeff, CJ's parents, so we could stay there. So we stayed there in, in, I th- in the spare bedroom. Here comes CJ. Hey, 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 you can't stay here. And he's crying and he's shaking his hand. He's about four, maybe five. <laughs> you can't stay I here. I think you I might have even been younger. He was yeah, like 15, you 16. They really hold this against me. Yeah, well, he you, does. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can't be here. I can't. You can't. I hate you guys. And, Great grandma, she doesn't know what to say, and I well, I should have. Poor grandma took it personally. <laughs> you, <laughs> anyway, that was, oh look well, at there. One time, my grandma <laughs> bought me underwear for my birthday, and I was so embarrassed, I cried. I'm hoping she forgot it. Cause what she got you smalls? No, she got me like <laughs> freaking SpongeBob underpants. I was like 12, so it was just like right in that age, and you still had friends over your birthday party. Cried like a baby. Man. That had to have been a rough look. Right? It was probably a rough look. You it was get more underwear oh, and then you start and then crying. crying. <laughs> what an idiot, dude! I was probably younger than that. Eight. I don't know. <laughs> I think you gave me a case of beer at on my twelfth birthday. I did. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't think so. Because I did. <laughs> <laughs> Could you I'm, imagine? I, well, I, I might have given you one beer on your thirteenth birthday, but I don't have <laughs> a case. But I'm not going to give you a case of beer. I'll drink it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was about the age that you when whenever we would start coming over, you started offering us beer. Yeah, only, only one, right? That's all I, that's all <laughs> I had given. One. It was yeah. more of a setup, though. It was trying to see if you'd take it. Yeah, so but I, could, you I could, yes, t- you I could, could tell it. the parents. But, yeah, yeah, that was one of the, one of the stories about CJ. Uh, <laughs> I love, they hold it over me. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. do. But, but uh, They but bring that story up all the time. It's hard to say this, but Ben was really always a good kid. I mean. No he, way. Yeah, that he, one? Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. He, uh, I remember shit when he crawled around. He never cried. Not he cries now a lot probably, but he never cried. He was like, just always a good kid. Just you know, and the, Nick this never cried. You know, he was just you probably was afraid to sh- get the shit kicked out of him by his older brother and his sister. I don't know, but he never cried. He was a good. Yeah, so pumping it, my tires. Thank you, Grandpa. Well, Thank you didn't. You. I mean, you you didn't. You were a little, a little kid that just always laughed, crawl around and floor and. Yeah, they they actually tested if I was deaf. Because they thought I couldn't hear because I, I, like, wouldn't I cry? guess wouldn't cry. And really? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Right, Dad? How long did I go without crying? Like, years. Yeah. Yeah. You're amazing. I, yeah. Years. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. But then, of course, I had a, a chance to watch CJ play hockey a lot. And, of course, when he played hockey, his cheeks would look like two red roses. Remember how, how rosy your yeah. yeah. I probably got red cheeks yeah. right now, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it could be. But I watched him get some uh, hat tricks many times. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to say get lit up. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> but, Thank uh, you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Were you? Uh, I appreciate the hat tricks. Stuff, you were getting so. hatties? Yeah. Oh, he could, yeah. Were, were you a goal scorer? Lots of score. Lots of scoring. Lots of scoring. Yeah, he won more medals and shit for that. No. Thank you. I appreciate that. You, you can't. Did. You can't say that on your own. Well, you did. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Thank then God. Someone what, finally what's recognized the one that, it. Who's the guy that had where you did it behind your back? Who did that? Uh, 
Sidney Crosby. Sydney. Or when I did it when I was when, young, when I, I, went, I skated behind the net and I had a bunch of wax on my stick, so I picked the puck up and put it behind behind him and made and made it like goal. behind the goal. Oh, yeah, yeah was, like wasn't that it a up. pretty big deal too? Oh, Didn't yeah. you get like yeah, brought the, on varsity oh. because of that or something? Or what? what? No, I was like a k- younger, oh. but uh, but yeah, no. We didn't have it on video though. But that now, shit would have gone sports oh, center. That was a Sidney Crosby yeah. shot. Only he's the guy. Only guy that could. It was the University of Michigan goal. That's I think who originally did oh. it in like college hockey, like in uh, the nineties. Made yeah. behind your back. Wow. Oh wow. yeah. Oh, yeah. You've always been so so involved in our life though. Like I mean, you came to every sporting event. Any kind of like school thing, we'd be hanging out. Now you're filming YouTube videos and podcasts with us. It's like really, uh, I mean, yeah. Thank you That's for that. Cool. It's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Well, I'm safe today. We're I got lucky. my I got my chiropractor here. So don't try any <laughs> shit with me today, Grandpa. We don't have to try anything with you. You'll <laughs> just hurt yourself. <laughs> oh, Thank yeah. God he's here. He's gonna help you when you fall down. I know. That's what I said. I'm glad I got him here. That's yeah. He, oh, keep, damn. he keeps me healthy. For Christ's sakes, that's good. <laughs> you know. Hopefully, uh, Grandma lets you continue to hang out with us, yeah. and uh, I, I mean, and the rest of the family. We, <laughs> I did get a, we did get a little backlash after that one, but um, you did from who? I, well, they just weren't. I mean, not too pumped. Yeah, they just weren't too stoked on on. Uh, I guess us enabling it. <laughs> I, he's That's, older than me. I, he should be telling me what to do. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Like I said, when my niece saw that, she thought it was great. So what the hell, you know? Well, we appreciate you, and we're glad that you're okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, so am I. But yeah. we we we'll, uh, we, uh, do, we do have future. to keep doing more uh, more video bits or something. Maybe we could do something a little more dangerous. <laughs> Like, what you have? I, mean, I, I didn't no, know I didn't bowling was dangerous. I didn't either. I didn't either. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> maybe try trap shooting and I'm on the wrong. Oh my god! Uh, the wrong end of a gun or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're you're looking too into like the danger factor. Oh no! no. I just so you guys have fun and do some videos. That's we good. could do a bunch more pranks. We could maybe have Ben pull up in his Lamborghini or something, and then you, and like he's like maybe like bragging about it to some guy, and then you pull him. Like, what are you doing with my car? Well, yeah, I can like do spank them or something in public. Yeah. Can I take the car then too? Yeah. Okay, it's my car. You take that's my car. I want it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, Whatever. we'll we'll do Perfect. some other stuff. Whatever you guys want. All right, I think we're gonna wrap. But uh, new merch drop: cboystv.com, April twenty seventh. Go and check it out, seven p.m. And uh, go and pick up some merch. Get entered for the giveaway. And uh, we appreciate the support. Do you do you want us to plug? You don't have any social media. Do you want us to like plug your email or? You can do anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to plug your email because you have to get a new one after that. <laughs> right, thank you, care. guys. Thanks, Thanks for coming on, Grandpa. Oh, yeah, that's fun. We yeah, love you. you. Guys, oh, you guys are great. Yeah. <laughs> so, you even have cold beer here. That's yeah. good.